Bundesliga table toppers and reigning champions Bayern Munich are one of only two European teams to have won multiple full continental travels, and they're one of only seven teams to have done it at all. That is to say, they won the three biggest trophies available to the club within a single season, the Bundesliga title, the DFB Pokal, and the UEFA Champions League. Bayern's two trebles came in the 2012-13 season and last season, when the Bavarian Giants cruised to a Bundesliga title, battered by Leverkusen in the final of the DFB Pokal, and narrowly overcame Paris Saint-Germain in the final of the UEFA Champions League, following emphatic victories against the likes of Chelsea and Barcelona en route to their showdown with the Parisians. The Bayern Munich teams of 2012-13 and 2019-20 were both all-conquering winning machines who played some exhilarating football and dispatched world-class opposition with ease. Perhaps it's a little surprise then that HITC7 subscriber Ashvir sent me an email requesting that I attempt a combined 11 pitting Bayern's class of 13 up against their class of 20, and I would like to offer my assurance to all of you who sent me DMs and emails that I am slowly but surely attempting to make my way through them all. Just so we're all clear on the criteria, I'm going to compare Bayern's starting 11s from the 2013 and 2020 Champions League finals side by side, and at the end, we'll come up with a combined 11. Fortunately, both teams played very similar formations. Without further ado then, here is my 2012-13 versus 2019-20 Bayern Munich combined 11. Goalkeeper, Manuel Neuer versus Manuel Neuer. There's a familiar look about the goalkeeping position from 2013 to 2020, since Manuel Neuer has been Bayern Munich's undisputed number one since arriving from Schalke in 2011. The 2012-13 season was a significant one in the rise of Manuel Neuer to global stardom, as he made the FIFA World 11 and was named as the IFFHS World's Best Goalkeeper for the first time. Somewhat surprisingly, Neuer didn't make the FIFA World 11 for 2020, outvoted by Alison Becker of Liverpool, but he was named as the best goalkeeper of 2020 at FIFA's The Best Awards. Neuer was outstanding in both seasons, but he was just about at the peak of his powers in 2013. Statistically, Bayern Munich only conceded 18 goals all season in the Bundesliga in 2012-13, compared to 32 in 2019-20. But, more than that, Neuer was just a little bit sharper, a little bit more fearsome, and a smidgen harder to beat. He remains arguably the best keeper on the planet, but 2013 Neuer edges it for me. Right back. Philip Lahm vs Joshua Kibbuck. A painstaking decision between two generational talents within the German game, Philip Lahm and Joshua Kimmich have a great deal in common. Both players started out at fullback, but ended up playing in midfield albeit Kimmich much earlier, and both players became arguably the best right-backs in the world at one time. Splitting them as footballers is tough, but as right-backs, which is where both started in their respective Champions League finals, my choice is Lahm. One of the finest right-backs, not just of his generation but of all time, Lahm was a faultless fullback with a first-class footballing brain, and he'd walk into almost any team. Centre-back. Jerome Boateng versus Jerome Boateng. There are three positions in this combined 11 where the same player is up against their former self. Of the three, this one is the easiest decision. Jerome Boateng deserves immense credit for the renaissance that he has enjoyed at Bayern Munich. When he was handed his marching orders against Sweden at the 2018 World Cup, Boateng seemed to be in a dark hole, and one from which many players would have struggled to emerge. Even when Bayern Munich sold Mats Hummels in 2019, there were a lot of people, myself included, who felt they'd have been better off hanging on to Hummels and selling Boateng. Yet again, the centre-back has proved his doubters wrong. He looked revitalised alongside Niklas Zula, but even after the German giant was sidelined, Boateng remained a constant rock at the back in Hansi Flick's side last season. I doff my cap to the former Man City man, but back in 2013, he was quite possibly the most complete centre-back on the planet. So, it's 2013 Boateng who wins this one. Centre-back. Dante versus David Alaba. An uncompromising man-mountain of a centre-back who slotted perfectly into Jupp Heynckes' backline in 2012-13 following his arrival from Borussia Mönchengladbach versus a left-back who was forced into central defence by interim boss Hansi Flick due to an injury to Nicolas Zola. This one should be a foregone conclusion. Except it isn't. I think Dante is, and was, an outstanding centre-back, whose buying career was only really cut short by Pep Guardiola's high line, and he is still going strong now, captaining Nice at the age of 37. 
David Alaba is not just a superior footballer though, I think that much is pretty obvious, but also a superior centre-back I believe. Having assumed that position through desperation last season, Alaba once again exhibited his versatility and superb understanding of the game. He has been outstanding and he makes my combined 11 alongside the younger version of Boateng. Left back. David Alaba versus Alfonso Davies. David Alaba is the only player to crop up twice in this video, but in two different positions, as a centre-back in 2020 and as a left-back in 2013. The choice between Alaba and Davies isn't a simple one, since Davies was a real force of nature following his Bavarian breakthrough, and an absolute joy to watch at times. Nevertheless, I think David Alaba was a better left-back in 2013 than Alfonso Davies was in 2020, despite the fact that both would walk into almost any team on earth. Given that Alaba is now technically in this 11 twice, which seems a bit daft, there will be a slight rejig at the end to prevent his duplicate inclusion, and also to see how the 11 would look if I didn't have to limit myself to only including players who played in the same position. Holding midfield, Javi Martinez versus Thiago Alcantara. Two very different players now in holding or defensive midfield, namely Javi Martinez, who is much more destructive, and Thiago Alcantara, who is much more creative. Martinez is a powerful anchorman who is oftentimes deputised at centre-back for Bayern and looks likely to leave the club this month. Thiago is an elegant and intelligent deep-lying playmaker to whom controlling the tempo of a game is second nature, and who left for Liverpool in the summer just gone. In truth, it's like comparing chalk and cheese, but Thiago is an absolute delight at his best and he came mightily close to his best at times during the 2019-20 campaign, so he's my choice. Central midfield Bastian Schweinsteiger versus Leon Goretzka. Much more of a like-for-like -like comparison than the previous duo, Bastian Schweinsteiger and Leon Goretzka both played crucial roles for Bayern Munich on the left side of midfield in treble-winning teams. Schweinsteiger spent much of his early career playing out wide on either the left or right flank and ended it at centre-back. He played his best football in central midfield though, where he became one of the best midfields on the planet at Bayern Munich. In the 2012-13 campaign, he bagged 9 goals and made 7 assists for Bayern, often arriving late in the box from deep. Goretzka plays a similar role now as something of a midfield all-rounder with bundles of energy and an excellent understanding of the game. Both are outstanding, but 2013 Schweinsteiger is the obvious choice and the right choice as far as I'm concerned. Right wing. Iron Robin versus Serge Gnabry. It's very easy to call this one in favour of Iron Robin, and ultimately, that is obviously what I'm going to do. But we can't dismiss Serge Gnabry as if he didn't have a mind-bogglingly brilliant 2019-20 campaign. At the age of 25, Gnabry is now one of the most productive wide players in all of world football. Having won Bayern's Player of the Year award in 2018-19, following 12 goals and 5 assists, he continued his unbelievable ascent in 2019-20, bagging 21 goals and making 12 assists all term. It's an outstanding record, and it means that Nabry scored more goals and made more assists in 2019-20 than Iron Robin did in 2012-13. That is largely because Rob M was injured half of that season though, but he returned and produced when it mattered most. Aged 29 at the time, Rob M still had electric pace and a left foot that gave goalkeepers nightmares. He scored in the dying embers of the 2013 Champions League final to win by their first treble. He was one of the best wide players of his generation, and he beats even a fantastically informed Serge Gnabry to a starting berth in this 11. Attacking midfield. Thomas Muller versus Thomas Muller. The third and final one of these in this seven, Thomas Muller is up against himself in attacking midfield. Except, it isn't really attacking midfield that he plays in, is it? Or is it? The brilliant Bavarian space invader has essentially invented a position all of his own, and it is one which has made him one of the most effective footballers of the 21st century. By the time he retires, it's possible that Lionel Messi will be the only player with more assists than Muller since records began, in addition to the more than 200 goals that he has already scored to date. I found this the toughest selection in this entire 11 actually, since Muller was absolutely sensational during both campaigns. In many respects though, I think the 31 year old is as good now as he has ever been, and certainly he has never previously been this creative. He scored 12 goals and made 23 assists last season, and whilst I wouldn't argue with anyone who preferred a 2013 Muller for too long, it is his 2020 self that very narrowly edges it for me. Left wing. Frank Ribéry versus Kingsley Coman. 
A slightly easier decision, Kingsley Komen is a fantastic talent, but in Frank Ribéry in 2013, we are talking about a world-class player at the absolute peak of his powers. Ribéry made 14 assists in 24 appearances in the Bundesliga alone that season, and he routinely turned on the style for Bayern when it mattered most. A phenomenal footballer who spent more than a decade at the club, Ribéry actually came third in 2013 Ballon d'Or voting behind the familiar duo of Messi and Ronaldo. Some felt he deserved to take the award outright that year. Those people are wrong, it is supposed to be an individual rather than a team award. But Ribéry was scintillating around that time, and at the age of 24, having had numerous difficulties with injuries, Komen cannot yet present a genuine challenge to one of Bayern's greatest players of the modern era. Centre forward, Mario Mandzukic versus Robert Lewandowski. When dealing with this final inclusion, it is important not to be disrespectful to Mario Mandzukic, who was a fine servant to Bayern Munich. A tremendous athlete who probably gave Bayern his two best years in the sport, Mandzukic scored 48 goals in 88 games for the Bavarian Giants, and is rightly still very highly regarded in that part of the world. That record would hold up well against 99% of centre forwards, but Robert Lewandowski very much belongs to the 1% of extraordinary centre forwards. In the 2019-20 campaign, Lewandowski scored 55 goals in 47 games, and a strong case could be made for him having been the best player on earth that season. Always outstanding for Lewandowski to have reached yet new heights in his early 30s is seriously impressive, and he has continued to average better than a goal a game this season. He is now Bayern Munich's second highest goal scorer of all time, and whilst he would have to really defy the laws of biology to exceed Gerd Muller's all-time record, he will go down as one of, if not the greatest centre-forwards of his generation. For all his talent and application, the same cannot be said for Mario Mandzukic, so hopefully, with plenty of due credit to the creation, this was a very easy decision. That is both starting 11s compared man for man, but since the starting 11 throws up one or two anomalies, I took a dig at creating a combined 11 without the restriction of only comparing players in the positions that they started in their respective Champions League finals, and without any duplicate inclusions. And this is what I ended up with. As you can see, 2013 Manuel Neuer starts in goal, the back four reads Lam, 2013 Boateng, 2020 David Alaba at centre-back, and Alfonso Davies at left-back. Joshua Kimmich starts in holding midfield, in place of both Javi Martinez and Thiago Alcantara, partnered by club legend Bastian Schweinsteiger, and the magnificent front four remains unchanged, namely Iron Robin, 2020 Thomas Muller, Frank Ribéry, and Robert Lewandowski. Before I leave you, there is of course the small matter of the management of this combined 11, which presents a toss-up between Jupp Pankus and Hans-Dieter Flick. The job that Flick did in turning Bayern into the best team in Europe after replacing Nico Kovac midway through last season was phenomenal, and ought not be understated, but it's difficult to compare him to a seasoned legend of the game like Hankus at this stage. Hankus did a magnificent job at Bayern from 2011 through to 2013, at a time when Borussia Dortmund looked well poised to usurp their supremacy, and the 2012-13 Bayern Munich team was a superior all-round machine, as far as I'm concerned, than the blistering Bayern team of 2019-20. So Hankus takes up a seat in the dugout. That's it for today's video, but since this is the first Combine 11 that I've done for a while, please do let me know in the comments whether you have any other Combine 11s that you'd like to see, whether you even like these videos, I would be interested to see whether you think the channel has moved on, or whether there's still time for some fun stuff like this. Anyhow, also give the video a like if you enjoyed it, uh, let me know your thoughts as I say in the comments, and make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications for HITC7s. Oh, and you can also find me on Twitter or Instagram via the username at HITC7s should you wish to do so.